Hello, everybody. I am Sarah Rodriguez, and this is the Rodriguez Report podcast. It's sometimes hard to understand policy unless you feel it, until you or someone close to you is impacted by a policy decision. It's just an abstract idea that doesn't affect real people. In this episode, we're talking with Peggy McDowell. Peggy's been in the news recently, speaking out about her journey to get desperately needed health care coverage for herself and her husband. Their story reflects the challenges that many uninsured and underinsured Wisconsinites face every day, forced to choose between their health care and other basic needs, or like in Peggy's case, between health care and their marriage. When we got the divorce, it was 2018. We looked at our combined income. We knew what it took to live, and we decided we could make it. And we had a little extra at the each month, and we would do that. Well, it's 2023 now, and uh, gas is way more expensive. Groceries are way more expensive. Our heating bills were unbelievable this past winter. And so we're getting to the end of the month because we have to keep our income at the poverty level, 100% poverty level or below. Right. And there ain't anything extra. No. And um, if they would expand the Badger Care to the 138% of the poverty level, we could each earn another $500 a month, which doesn't sound like a lot to most people, but that could be tires for the car, you know, those kinds of things that come up that, that you need money for. Also, that would mean that I, I'm able-bodied. I can do some work. I actually am employed as a self-employed artist, and my husband is able-bodied. We could work for some mom and pop store in Tomahawk, and we're losing them. We've yep. lost a bakery, a pizza place, two grocery stores. You know, I mean, we could do that. And said, look, I would work. There are a lot of us like us that would work that if we could keep our health care, we would do those mom and pop part time jobs. So what you're talking about, Peggy, is that, you know, we have a workforce shortage in Wisconsin. Yes. And so it's not just about making sure that people can have access to health care. But what you're saying is, is that this is an economic concern as well, because you could be working more hours and still be able to afford your Medicaid or be able to qualify for Medicaid. You could work more hours and be able to qualify for Medicaid. And that's going to help the economy where you live. And you live in a pretty right. small town. And so and those little mom and pop shops, they really need people like you to be working. Right. And the $500 would go back into the community. It would get spent for things that are in my town, you know, whether it's a pair of socks or a loaf of bread. So do you think there are other people like you out there that looked at their finances and said, you know what, we can't do this if we're married. We have to divorce to be able right. to qualify for health care in Wisconsin. That sounds extreme to people, but the reality is, is that you had to do this to be able to get the health care that you needed. Right. I do think there are other people. I talked to several women that had mm. breast cancer mm. and their husband's insurance wouldn't pay for their care. And therefore, they divorced. And I can't imagine what it would be like to have a catastrophic illness on top of having to go through the whole concept of having a divorce. On the other hand, too, there are people, I'm thinking about women because that's me, who stay married in a lousy relationship because that's the only way they and their children have health care. What do I have to do in order to survive this? 70% of Wisconsin voters support expanding Badger Care, 70%. And that's across all demographics, rural, urban, and suburban voters, Republicans, Democrats, independents, they all, a huge percentage support Medicaid expansion for Wisconsin. We have this opportunity. It has been over a decade that other states have expanded Medicaid and they have seen really fantastic results, decreases in mortality rates, increases in cancer screening rates. And so it is imperative as Wisconsin 
in that we go ahead, bring those federal dollars home and really take care of our own people here. Like you said, we are all in the same sandbox. You know, we all have to take care of each other. And that's why I love living in Wisconsin is because we take care of each other here. Absolutely. Another thing that I would like to address is this false notion that there are all kinds of people on Medicaid that are able-bodied, that are just kicked back collecting the money. Now, by definition, Medicaid is people who are 65 and older, children, people who are disabled, who in that population is able-bodied to work. You have people that are on Badger Care that aren't fitting that criteria. But what those people are that have Badger Care are the working poor. Mm -hmm. They are people that are already working. They aren't sitting back without a job. Some of them are working two and three jobs. They are just not making enough money to be able to afford the health insurance that um, is on that individual market. And so you're right. These are people who are working. They're just not making that much money. And that's what's really disappointing to me is that we um, are not caring for individuals who, again, are participating within the economy in Wisconsin and could participate possibly even more, like you said yourself, if we were able to expand Medicaid to that 138% of poverty. I definitely feel that it is time. You know, enough time has passed. We have watched other states do it. We are in the minority states with just 10 left that haven't accepted the expansion. And the Affordable Care Act itself acknowledged that this was going to be a problem, which is why they offered the expansion money in the first place. You went to Manaqua. You talked with the legislators there at the budget listening session. How was that received? What did they what did they say to you? Well, I had an amazing response. I had people stop and and tell me that they really appreciated that I spoke. I sat through the listening session almost the entire day. They all had very good reasons for wanting to see Evers budget go through the way it was. It was very, very enlightening. And it was so wonderful to be with all these people that cared about each other and cared about people. Absolutely. And I wanna I wanna make sure that's really clear. Governor Evers put into his budget expansion of Badger Care, expansion of Medicaid in Wisconsin to cover people like yourself. Mm -hmm. And in May, the Republicans on the Joint Finance Committee removed that provision from the budget, even though it would help people access health care, even though it would bring $2 billion of federal money back to Wisconsin. And that was pretty disappointing for me. How did you feel when they did that? I find it so unbelievable. If somebody offered me money for a really good reason, I would take it. (laughs) I just, I just don't get it. And I kind of got it like 10 years ago when they were saying, oh, well, this might happen and that might happen. And they talked about all these terrible scenarios. If they took the money, it hasn't happened. All of the states that have taken the money have expanded their health care, have covered more people, have made a difference in lots of people's lives. And the more that we can care for each other and have a healthy population of people, the better off we're all going to be. Many people may not know is that if we expanded Medicaid or Badger Care within Wisconsin, we could bring almost $2 billion back home, like money from the federal government back home to Wisconsin. That could be invested in health care. That could be invested in people like yourself. It could be invested in mental health resources for kids. This is money that we're leaving on the table in Wisconsin, and we're forcing people like yourselves to make these terrible decisions, like divorcing your husband of 47 <laughs> years just to be able to afford health care. Peggy, thank you for sharing your story with us today. Peggy's story is like so many that I hear from folks across our state as they try to navigate health care for themselves or their loved ones. As Lieutenant Governor and as a nurse, 
I'm honestly angry when I hear our neighbors talk about the barriers they face or the difficult choices they have to make because I know there's a common sense solution. Expand Badger Care. Wisconsin is on the sidelines right now. We are one of only 10 states in the entire country that has not expanded Medicaid. And of those 10 states, we are the only one that would see a direct reduction in our state spending by expanding Badger Care. Wisconsin taxpayers deserve to have their fair share of federal dollars returned to Wisconsin to invest in the people of our state. It's good for our families, it's good for our businesses, and it just makes sense. This is our moment to get off the sidelines, do the right thing, and bring us all together as a healthier community. This has been another edition of the Rodriguez Report podcast with Lieutenant Governor Sarah Rodriguez. I want to thank each of you for tuning in and engaging for the full story. Please like and subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. And tell your family and friends to do the same. I'm Sarah Rodriguez, and thanks for listening.